there we are. I'm going now to move over to my other slide set there. I'm going to start to talk a little more about the people. Where do they live? To know an idea about the world is very important to know how people are distributed. Now, Gapminder Foundation is independent. Uh, we are like a museum. We are at arm length from the government. We are arm length from business. We are a foundation. Uh, so we can divide the world as we see fit. And we decided that uh, this is America. We joined it. But we said Greenland is occupied by Denmark, so it will be European. Uh, we also decided that Turkey belonged to Europe. Europe is very small, so we had to give both Europe a little. Yeah? And we added also the whole of Russia all the way there. Uh, then this is Asia. And we said the Australians and New Zealand, they have to be Asians. Get used to it. <laughs> it becomes easier that way, you know? <laughs> because we found out if we just had four parts of the world, it becomes easier to remember. If you take away Oceania, you take away the Middle East, it's just start to compl complexify. Divide North and South America. So keep it like that, and we keep the colors the same. How many people are we? Well, we are 7 billion. 7 billion people. To be precise this year, 7.3 billion. How correct do we know? We know plus minus uh, 0.1, 0 0.2 billion. We don't have this much wrong. We know how many people there are. Uh, and where do they live? One billion in America, one in Europe, one in Africa, and four in Asia. Pin code 1114. Remember that pin code now. It's the pin code of the world. Uh, if you, then you know more or less. It's one there, it's one there, one there, and four there. So most people are in Asia. Most people are in Asia. Uh, and, uh, and what will happen up to 2050? 2050, 35 years from now, we know fairly well what will happen. Europe will not increase. America will not increase. A little more retired people in South America, but that's marginal. Asia will get one billion more people. One billion more. But with that last billion, the fast population growth in Asia is over. From there on, there will be can be a little more people, but more probably Asia will start shrinking. Uh, and, 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 and Africa, in the next 35 years, will double their population. So an increase with 25% there and with 100% there. It's not so strange because population growth started, the fast population growth started there, followed there, then there, and then there in Africa. It's not so different what is happening. It's just that it happens with some generation difference when it started. Now, by the end of this century, in 2100, uh, then there will be no more in Europe, no more in America, no more in Asia, but there will be one billion, probably two billion more in Africa. And by then, it's estimated that the whole world population will have passed the fast population growth. There may be a little more people, half a billion more, uh, or it may already have stopped to decrease but more or less 10 to 11 billion there will be in the world. And, of course, the advice for Europeans is very clear, isn't it? Look here, one to four. Start being polite to Africans already today. They will outnumber us. So any relation you will have with Africa, it's good to be polite. Huh? Not make them angry. Huh? And uh, because they will be customers, they will be visitors, they will be tourists, you know? they will be partners. Uh, they live in the same time zone. Time zone will be very important for business in the future. Uh, if you split this into north and south and east and west, we get what I call the old west. You've heard that the Americans call Europe old Europe. Uh, they shouldn't brag so much. We can call the whole thing the old. It was the countries that first emerged with strong economies, better life condition, more education, democratic institutions, nice things, you know. They will in the future be less than 10% of the world population. When I went to school, they were 33%. They were one third of the world population. It will be a very small part. Huh? And 80% or more than 80% will be living in Asia and Africa. The main sea of trade will not be the Atlantic, not the Pacific, it will be the Indian Ocean. Uh, 
The, the, uh, the center of the world will not be London and New York, it will be Dubai. Dubai will be in the middle, the center of gravity of the world population. And also, if we look at that economy, huh, we can see that of the economy in the world, 50% is in the Old West and 35% of the growth. That means economy is growing slower in the richest countries than they are here. The economy is there 50% and the growth is 65%. You may have heard, if you're interested in this film, you are listening, oh, the growth in China is slowing down. Yeah, of course it is, because China is getting so rich. The richer you get, the slower growth you have. I just spoke to a major bank now that invests in China today because I'm going there to lecture. Uh, and, and, and they said, that's just a lot of fuss. Yet China grows stronger with more money per year. If you grow with 5%, then you have $8,000. That's more than if you grow with 10% with, with, uh, and you have $4,000. There's so many who want to say, oh, China, China's problem, no, China can't. Because it's so difficult to imagine that China will do the complete catch-up. But we who travel there, we see how the tourists from China is increasing in Stockholm. It's going like this. You know? And we see Chinese coming in, you know, being skilled. I worked with the Ebola epidemic in West Africa for three months. Uh, and we saw the Chinese team came there, very capable doctors and nurses, you know, really motivated, seriously, and said, we want to learn the disease of Africa, we can help out, we are going to collaborate with Africa in the future. They send the best people, really good and working, highly motivated, very professional, nicely working together, and not so scared as the Swedes were. They were more courageous, yeah? and, and, but professional. So, so you, see, you see how the world is changing. This, and this is sort of psychologically difficult. I know that these four billion in Africa, oh, how will that be? Such a lot of problem. Whereas some of the major com companies and the corporations I lecture to, they, wow, what an amount of customer. Let's invest there. Uh, let's build hotels there. That will be a lot of people. Uh, and you see this, these comments at the same time. Uh, if you want to, to invest money, some of you may inherit lots of money, you want to invest it somewhere. I have an advice. Why don't you buy beachfront property in Somalia? Strand, Tomti, Somalia. You don't think it's a good idea? Well, this is my, one of my best friends who did it. Associate Professor Asli Kolan at the Karolinska Institute, one of our fine researchers in global health, grew up in Mogadishu, had her medical training there, now a leading researcher here. And she said, ah, those pension funds in Sweden, who knows? We better diversify. And she got this very nice piece of land, and this is her breakfast table. Doesn't it look nice? It's a very beautiful beach. It's one of the longest beach in the world. And the nice thing with it, it has an inclination. So even if the seawater rises like this, you still have a nice beach. And this is just that it doesn't enter the head of people, you know, that... This could be the future. We have solar energy. We desalinate uh, seawaters. And people can come and relax on this beach. They can come with environmentally friendly boats. Oh, see how many people there are there? This is lots of people compared to Florida. Florida will be the backside of the world. I have a friend whose great-grandfather bought a piece of land on the beachfront in, in Florida. And they honor him now. Once upon a time, the family said he was stupid. And now everyone honors him. I'm sure that those who do it in Somalia, and I've been lecturing about this in, in several banks, J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs, and at both places, young economists of Somali origin came up and say, I did the same. I also have a beachfront property. I did the same. The government can now issue land titles, you know, and we buy it. And it's nice. And I've cited in Financial Time on this advice. <coughs> so you see... <coughs> The idea of the world is, is like, in West, many people have what they are proud of in the back. Whereas people in Africa and Asia have their pride in the front. And we are seeing changes coming. There are problems and there are wars, but what did we have in Europe? What did we have in Europe in the last century? Most of the world, wars in the world was in Europe. Huh? So that one, I'll take this off. Now, <clears throat> how much can we... Trust these numbers. He's talking about numbers. Who will know what will happen with the population? 
We know it very well. United Nations Population Division, fine demographers, experts, independent people, they said, you know, <coughs> back then in time, 1958, they did the first estimated world population. They said, <coughs> we are 3 billion now, and everyone was surprised, because at that time they thought it was 2.5 billion. So this was like a shock. And then when they said, our estimate says that it will grow like this, and by the end of the century, we will be more than 6 billion, slightly more than 6 billion. And I remember this because it was published in 1960 when I was 12 years old. I had a very good teacher. And I remember the day when she wrote on the blackboard, we are 3 billion people, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, all the zeros. And then she turned around and said, and those experts said that we would be twice as many by the end of this century. Uh, or at the end of, of this century, that was 40 years. When you are adult, you know, they will be twice as But everyone knows that that will not happen. It's impossible, of course. Huh? It is stupid to say that, because they say it will be more than one billion people in India. And in India, they are Hindus and Muslims, and those people are fatalistic. They cannot plan for the future. They will starve, and they will have a civil war. It will not happen. This or the other. And I had a good teacher. She was good. She was among the best. She just shared the opinion of the time. Never underestimate the arrogance of West Europe and North America. The arrogance towards other people. You know? How we were spoon-fed this thing that it wouldn't happen. We couldn't imagine an India with such a lot of people and that things were better. They made another projection there, 1968, they did this 1978, and now we know what happens. We know exactly 6.1, respect for demography. They were 3% wrong in a 42 years prediction. 3% wrong. That's an enormous precision. And everyone said back then, this will never happen. And you see 4 billions in Africa, and you say that will never happen because, because, because. Because the European brain cannot imagine that. It can't imagine that. But the African can, and I'll tell you, scholars in Africa, what they say. What is the biggest change in our time? What is behind this? 